Media. Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 49 of the Kansas Missing and Unsolved podcast. I'm Ricky Chiruggi. Joining me again is Derek Relaford. How are things going down there in the Zona? Not too bad. Uh, Kelsey Youngblood changed her number today. So she put a thing on Facebook. She's like, hey, um, sex me if you want me. Text me if you want my number. So I just sent her a message on Facebook with my number, and she was like, 620? What the hell is that? And I was like, Kansas. She's like, I thought that was uh, 485 and uh, what was it, 480 and 785 or whatever. But uh, I was like, no, Western Kansas is 620. But, you know, I've been in Arizona for about three years now, and I don't think I'm going to change my number. Right. It's just messy. Yeah, it is. I changed my number when I moved from the East Coast back to Kansas. And, like, I'm pretty sure I, that's the last time I spoke to, like, 50 people, like, because they lost my number. And I just, that was the only way they had to get in contact with me. And, yeah. What up, hey, Kelsey? Hey, Kelsey. How you doing tonight? How things going out there in Wilson? Or I guess you might still be in Quinter. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I wanted to throw this on the screen. Uh, we, we, uh, we did hit 2,000 downloads on the podcast. Yep. That's awesome. Thank you, everybody, that downloaded it on Spreaker. That's that's awesome. Yeah, that's really cool. Uh, a lot of people listening to it, we, we think that's great that yeah. people are uh, – Tuning in for sure. Fort Scott. Hey, Daddy. How's it going, Dottie? Fort Scott. All right. Chelsea Crop Recline. Don't ever change your number. Super messy. <laughs> yeah, agreed. I don't think I'm going to. I think a lot of people. And the, th- the funny thing is, is here in Phoenix, the area code is 602. Oh, wow. So every time I give my phone number to like uh, somebody, like I'm buying something, they're just like, they're like uh, <laughs> six zero two, right? I'm like no six two zero. They're like you mean yeah. six zero two? I'm like no six two zero. And Kelsey's up here from Arizona, and she still has her Arizona number. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, That's I'm not cool. changing it. I'm just gonna keep it the same. I, it's too messy. Yeah, it's too messy to change your phone number in 2021. Yeah. Yeah, so she changed her phone, so that means that she had to get all of her contacts again. Oh, yeah. Sam from Seneca, hoping we can find Alexis Jones alive and well. She is actually one of the cases we're going to be covering tonight, Sam. Yeah, give us just a little bit. We are totally going to cover that case. Um, We can actually get into some cases right now if you'd like. I would like to run this commercial real quick. It's a very important commercial. Uh, you're watching the cans. Yeah, you have a 602. That's yeah. <laughs> I better so, so confusing. I'm 620. They're 602. Yeah. It's a whole mess. Uh, you're watching Kansas yeah. Missing and Unsolved Podcast. If you or someone you know is a victim of human trafficking, call the National Human Trafficking Hotline at 1 888 373 7888. Hey, Deidre. How are you doing tonight? Thanks for joining us from Victoria. Nice. Yeah, we're going to start off with Abigail Self. She's missing from Derby, Kansas. Been missing since March 15th, 2021. She's 17 years old. She's 4 foot 11, weighs 160 pounds. She has brown hair and blue eyes. If you have any information regarding Abigail's disappearance or you know of her whereabouts, please call the Derby, Kansas Police Department at 316-788-1557 or the KBI at 785-296-4017. And Abigail, if you're listening or you see this, let somebody know where you're at so they can get you back home where you need to be. I like Derby. Nice mm-hmm. little uh Chanute. It's like what, like thirty or forty minutes from Wichita? Yeah. Hey, how you doing down there in Chanute, Patty? How you doing in Newton? I like Newton yeah. as well. Awesome, awesome. Thank you everybody for joining us. See you everybody can make it tonight. Some towns that I uh, I know. Yep, yep. Yeah. Well, if anybody out there has seen Abigail in the Derby area, as we said, also very close to Wichita. And there's Jessica from Park City, just outside of Wichita up to the north. How you doing, Jessica? Nice. Kingman, uh, Kansas. Yeah. Cammy from Kingman. <laughs> Cammy from Kingman. There you go. How you doing, Cammy? That's her. That's her. When she calls the show, it's Cammy from Kingman on the air. There you go. It has a <laughs> ring to it. Yeah, it does. Oh, ten minutes. I'm way off, Rick. 
Maybe ten my minutes. buddy. Yeah. I, I I picked up a buddy of mine from from I was in Wichita, and a guy picked me up in Wichita, and we had to drive to Derby to pick up another friend to go back to Garden City a hundred years ago. From and uh, Paola. I just, Paola, I just yeah. remember Derby being like pretty cool. It was like pretty close to the city, but pretty small towny mm-hmm. feeling. Yeah, and that was again a hundred years ago. So I don't right. know. <laughs> who knows what it's like now, but. Hey, Tammy from Paola. <laughs> awesome. All right. We, All right we, did little... cover, yeah, we did cover this recently. Um, mm-hmm. Lee Summit. Lee Summit, Missouri. Also, Nikki. Hello to Lee Summit. Have you ever looked at where, where this show goes? I try to follow it. It's crazy. It's yeah. crazy where this show goes. I'll tell you a little bit about it in a little bit. Tell us about Adriana Pack. Okay. There's Scranton. Hello from Scranton. And Adriana, we have shared her before, but I was asked to share her again. She's missing from Wichita, Kansas. She's been missing since February 21st of this year. She's 17 years old. She's five foot two inches tall, weighs between 130 and 145 pounds. She has brown hair and brown eyes. If you have any information regarding Adriana's disappearance, you know for whereabouts, please call the Wichita Police Department at 316-660-9456 or the KBI at 785-296-4017. And Adriana, there again, we got people looking for you. Let them know where you are so they can get you back home. We hit that month mark. Yep. Living, sing, living in a small city outside of a big one, get the best of both worlds, city life and country life. Yeah, that's what that. I thought. Like Derby was just kind of because, like, I don't know. Mm-hmm. I like I live in North Phoenix, like the most like Andrew really Bion far from the city, from Junction City. Junction City. Yeah, yeah. I, when I was eighteen, I lived in downtown Raleigh, North Carolina, and it was fun. And I had a good time, but I, I, I live close to like Tempe. Where there's like, I have a buddy that's my age, where I'm 38, and he's like, You should live in Tempe with me, man. It's great, man. It's just, it's a lively crowd. I'm like, Buddy, I'm 38 years old and tired. I don't <laughs> want to live in Tempe, Arizona. I want to live in North Phoenix, where my neighbors just kind of give me a wave, and that's it. I don't need to be around a ton of people. So yeah. I, I, I think that uh, Derby's a pretty cool little spot. Uh, yeah. Earlier in the show, we had somebody, let me see, where's that? I thought we had a somebody call out a case for us. No, I didn't see one yet unless I missed it. I swear. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, anyway, I swear I thought somebody had called in. I said I had called out for Alexis Nicole Jones. Oh yeah, well, that was the one. I, I didn't see that one. comment yeah, anymore though. Maybe it was deleted or something. I don't know. But Alexis Jones, we she's missing from Oneida, Kansas. Been missing since March twentieth, twenty twenty one. She's sixteen years old. She is five foot five inches tall, weighs a hundred pounds. She has black hair and black, uh, brown eyes. Excuse me. She had been talking to her ex boyfriend that lives in Hiawatha for about an hour, but it's unknown if she left to go see him. She was last known to be wearing all black. She had a black book bag that had additional clothes in it. She was also wearing a white hat with a Michael Jordan logo on it. If you have any information regarding Alexis's disappearance or you know of her whereabouts, please call the Nemaha County, Kansas Sheriff's Office at 785-336-2311 or the KBI at 785-296-4017. And Alexis, if you by chance see this or watch this down the road, you know, let somebody know where you are so they can get you back home. And there's Irene. <laughs> hey, Irene, how you doing tonight? Alexander Perez's mom. A couple Garden City people here tonight. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, man. We have I I you've added two more pictures of Alexander. Yeah, I have. I love it. Um, and I thank Irene, Kelsey for that because she sent them to me. So thank you, Kelsey, for getting me those. When we find this boy, I'm gonna have a beer with him because I feel like I know him. When we find this boy, I promise I I, I am going to. Uh, I feel like I know your son. He's on here every week, and uh, Ricky's going to tell us about him again. And uh, we're all here for you, Irene, and we're all hoping that he comes home soon, and this will all be just a thing from the past. Yeah. He's missing from Ulysses, Kansas, and been missing since December 1st of 2020. He contacted a family member via telephone on December 1st and advised he'd be coming to their home to wash clothing items. He never arrived at the family member's house in Ulysses. 
and he has not been heard from or seen since by family or friends since that date. Alexander had been staying with family and friends prior to his disappearance. It's believed that he may still be in the local Ulysses area or he may be in the Garden City or surrounding area. He's 35 years old. He's five foot eleven. weighs 235 pounds. He has black hair that he uh, shaves off and brown eyes. He has a tattoo of a bumblebee on his face underneath his left eye. And he also has press tat- tattooed on one of his arms. And it looks like he also has a tattoo going just right above the, along the collarbone there that I did not know about prior to getting these two pictures. And it kind of looks like, I don't know, like a chain design or something maybe. I'm not real sure. But if you have any information regarding Alexander's disappearance or you know of his whereabouts, please call the Grant County, Kansas Sheriff's Office at 620-356-3500 or the Ulysses, Kansas Police Department at 620-356-4600 or the KBI at 785-296-4017. And I encourage anybody, you know, no matter how small of a little tidbit of information and uh, you might think it might be, please let investigators know what that is because it be it could be very very huge to them and point them in a direction they're not uh, they haven't thought of or didn't know about to go before. So you know, let's let's get some information going on Alex so he can be found and brought home. Yeah, it's, I don't want to be talking yeah. about this in December. You know, it's been a long time. Right. We need to get. We need to get Alexander found. And Kelsey did start a page for him, a Facebook page for him. Uh, Kelsey, if you want to pop that up in the comments, I can I can pass that on for you. I mean, Irene's saying we haven't heard anything from the KBI. Uh, her son Chris has called, but nothing more has been said. Wow. We're going to keep sharing this picture. Yeah. Somebody knows something, and we're not going to stop talking about it until they say something. I know he's, you know, we got to, somebody knows something, Irene, and we're, you know, we're here, we're pulling for you. Everybody that watches this show is pulling for you. We show this flyer every week. Kelsey's working on stuff behind the scenes, trying to get people to cover this in the media. It needs to be, definitely needs to be. I've shared it in the Garden City page, and uh, the reaction I got seemed to be kind of suspect to suspect to me a little bit, kind of sort of. Uh, no, you're good. Um, yeah, I hate it. Um, you're very welcome, Irene. Well, we're going to keep covering them until we, something breaks. And, and Cammy, she's saying, thinking of you and your family, Irene. Can't imagine. Hope he comes home soon. Chelsea Crawford Klein uh, brought up something. She said, so random, but because we're talking about Derby, the Fantastics USA of Derby is a huge gymnastics gym full of little girls. The brothers that own it are convicted sex offenders. Mm-hmm. I did a little bit of research. That's interesting. Um, it was Not a guy, good. Caleb Gaston. Mm-hmm. Um, he was charged with sex crimes against children uh, at the YMCA drop-in care center. Mm-hmm. I mean... Goodness. Yeah, so I don't want to give. Um, I don't. I, I'm sitting here reading. I don't know exactly if they were the owners or not. We're not exactly sure. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if that's uh, we'll definitely look into that. You know, maybe we can talk about that um in depth more later on. But yeah, I did find an article that attached to the to that to that name of that facility yeah. saying there was some mm. some not good stuff going on there. You're welcome, Irene. Okay, let's talk about Alicia. Alicia Christiana Navarro. We have covered her before, and I want to kind of cover her again. She's missing from Glendale, Arizona. Been missing since September fifteenth, twenty nineteen. She was fourteen when she went missing. She's now sixteen. She is four foot five inches tall, ninety five pounds. She has brown hair and brown eyes. Uh, she snuck out of the house during the early morning hours. It was discovered that chairs were pushed up to a fence in the backyard of the family home. Footprints believed to be Alicia's were found on both sides of the fence. My note left behind by Alicia said, I ran away. I will be back. I swear. I'm sorry, Alicia. 
Um, she did take her cell phone and her silver Apple MacBook, but did not take the chargers to either device. She also took a comic book with her that she wanted but never read. Alicia has been diagnosed as high functioning on the autism spectrum. She also suffers from high anxiety issues and has a compromised immune system. Um, she uh, again, she's 14 years old or was 14 when she went missing. She's 16 now. Four foot, uh, yeah, four foot five inches tall and weighs 95 pounds. She has long brown hair and brown eyes. She does wear braces, and she may be wearing the above right pictured sweatshirt. She does like to to wear and prefer sweatshirts, even in a warm Arizona climate. She likes sweatshirts. Um, if you have any information regarding Alicia's disappearance or you know of her whereabouts, please call the Glendale, Arizona Police Department at 623-930-3000 or the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children at 1-800-843-5678. And there is a $20,000 reward for information leading to Alicia's safe return. So if anybody has any information on that or if you know people in the Glendale area, share that with them, make them aware of it. Have them shared around Glendale, see if we can't generate some information and help get Alicia brought home. It's been far, far too long. Yeah, that's t- and I- I'm wondering, are they like 100% sure that that note was written by her, or is this could be like even more foul play? Or I, it's, I actually had seen a picture of the note in a news story, and, and apparently it was written by her. I mean, it had come out there, but she was communicating with somebody online, and... Wow. It was during the course that she apparently had been communicating with this person online that she insisted on buying that particular comic book, and it was unknown it was for, it was for her or who she was talking to. So I don't know. Man, they're worried that maybe she might have been lured into a trafficking situation. Possibly, they don't know. They they don't have any any evidence to indicate that, but it's always an, obviously a concern. So yeah, I mean it's. Two years when you don't know where your kid is. I mean, I, ugh, yeah. it I couldn't, bomb, I couldn't imagine. I could not imagine. That's like terrible. Yeah. And you say that she's uh, she's on the spectrum. Yeah. So you're you know you're just you. That's just a a, a lot of worry there because you don't know yeah. if somebody's taking advantage of her. Um, right. You know. I mean, and the thing is, is a lot of times when you see these things, you're like, I mean, I hope they're still alive, but. Yeah. A lot of times, just like man, like oh, she's she's special needs. You know, it's like it, yeah. If somebody has her, like I'm sure her quality of life's not great. You know, it's like if somebody's abusing her, I just it's the whole thing is just. Yeah, yeah. This, I can't uh, imagine. I couldn't imagine either. Sammy, sorry about that. Sammy's upset. That's okay. Uh, I'm gonna have to shut my bedroom door and keep him out of here for a while. <laughs> Sammy and your ringtone are part of this show. I'm telling you. Well, this is, uh, I'm about two stoplights from Glendale. So this one, you know, hits pretty close to home for me out yeah. here. Maybe I should have you, have you ever reached out to family members? Um, I'm trying to think if I have or not. I don't remember. I think I might've tried to reach out to their Facebook page, which I think is ran by a family member and stuff. So mm-hmm. I hate that. And Cassandra Wyrick, I did a flyer for her daughter recently. She said, thank you again, Ricky, for making flyers and for my daughter Isabella and posting her on your Kansas Missing and Unsolved page. Thank you to any followers who shared that post as well. And she was, I I believe she was actually located, I believe, which is always good. I always like putting a located safe on the flyer. Yeah. Yep, she was located safe. Awesome. So it's always good. I always like the located safes. And can, let's see, here is the Facebook page for Alex Perez that Kelsey has started, facebook.com slash find Alex Perez. That's awesome. She's home and safe. Glad to hear that. There that is again, facebook.com slash find Alex Perez. So if you guys want to go to that, you know, like and follow that page as well, go right ahead. I encourage you to do that. And, you know, between our page and Kelsey's page for Alex, you know, hopefully we'll get him found and brought home. Just to give you a quick look, this is what it looks like. Facebook.com slash find Alex Perez. Yeah. This is the page you're looking for. That's awesome. So go ahead and shoot, go over there. And uh, if you know anything, Kelsey's helping running that page. So mm-hmm. if you know anything, 
Yeah, you know, definitely. She, she's been communicating directly with Irene, so that's awesome, man. Yeah. And if anybody Irene, wants to pass anything on to me, I can pass it on to Irene as well. I've never met Irene, but I, I like her a lot. Yeah, yeah. She's uh, she seems very. I don't know. She seems like a good mom. You know. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. I like good moms, man. That's. They usually feed you pretty well, you know, when you go visit your buddy who has a good mom, you know, they usually, it's a good time. They, they're nice to you. That's all that stuff. She, she seems You're like welcome. a nice lady. Uh, Ricky, we need to find this next person, but uh, I'm going to let you You're say welcome. their name. Go ahead. No nice. idea how to say this. I'm not real sure myself, so I'm going to give it a shot here. If anybody in the it. chat can phonetically tell us yeah. how this is said, but Ricky's going to try I'm it. I'm going to say it's Ajene is what I'm going to try to go with is Ajene or Ajene McGill. If it's Ajene, that's a really pretty name. I, yeah. I would have never got that. You're really good yeah. at that. Man, I would have never got Ajene. <laughs> She's missing from Topeka, Kansas. She's been missing since March 15th of 2021. So for like 10 days now, she's 14 years old. She is five foot one to five foot five inches tall. She weighs bet- uh, between 200 and 246 pounds. She has brown hair and brown eyes. It's believed she's still in Topeka. If you have any information regarding Ajene's disappearance or you know of her whereabouts, please call the Topeka, Kansas Police Department. It's 785-368-9200. Or the KBI at 785-296-4017. And see if we can't help get her found. And Ajne, if you're listening or you see this, you know, let somebody know where you are so they can get you back where you need to be so you can get some things taken care of and get back on track. Yeah. 14's a little young to be yeah. grabbing the reins. Definitely. I think you got it right. Emily, 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 see, I can't even say her name. Uh, she says Ajne, so that looks like you Ajane. were pretty close, man. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate that. That's a really cool name. I'm just, you know, I'm the guy that's going to, if I'm the teacher and I'm like, is, uh, okay, I'm going to have trouble with this name. You know, it's just, it's a unique name. Yeah, it is. You're good though, man. Looks like Kelsey's saying you're right. That's what she would say. Yeah. And it's Emily. Emily. With an I. Emily with an I. That's, that's, (laughs) that's an interesting spelling for Emily. I've never seen that before. That's cool. I like that. Names, you know, you know, especially when you get to like when, when my generation start, you know, like you get a lot of, you get a lot of names. It's hard to spell. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, what's your name again? So like my son's name is Race. And some people think that's like so weird. It's actually, it's, it's four letters. And then my other son's name is Doc, D-O-C. Some people think those are weird names. I think, I think names are just, they're just, you know, they're, they're so unique. You know, it's really hard to spell somebody's name sometime or pronounce it. Breaking Columbia police said they believe human remains found at Rock Bridge State Park on Thursday belong to those of missing Columbia mother. I'm not sure that how to Minky? say that. Minky G. Her husband is awaiting trial in the Boone County Jail for her murder. Um, her driver's license and bank cards were found near the skeletal remains. I'll have to look into that. Thank you, Nikki. Appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah, Thank definitely. You. Definitely. Thank you for sharing that with us, Nikki. I appreciate that. Yeah, I hadn't heard that. Yeah. I hadn't heard that one at all. Yeah. I haven't either. Thank you. That I remember. I cover I do so many I can't keep up with them all. <laughs> I try. Yeah. I really do. I try my best to keep up with everything. Usually a name, since we've been doing this for a year now, usually a name I can remember more than a face. Yeah. Yeah, but I do make We've a, covered multiple times. I can yeah. remember names. And I did actually make a graphic for that, for the one-year anniversary of the, Miss, the Kansas Missing and Unsolved podcast, because we actually are at a year now. Yeah. Big and things happen. Yep, and Nikki's saying hit the hashtag on it, on Justice for... I have no idea how to say that. As a, I, I think mean, it's Minky. Minky? That's Minky, what I would guess. Minky. Minky. Yeah. I'm Just not smart. The ledge is her husband. Hmm. Okay. Tell us um, about Blake Hoover. Okie doke. 
Blake Hoover, missing from Wichita, Kansas, been missing since March 17th of 2021. He is 16 years old. He is six foot two to six foot five inches tall, weighs 205 to 215 pounds. He has blonde hair and green eyes. If you have any information regarding Blake's disappearance or you know of his whereabouts, please call the Wichita, Kansas Police Department at 316-660-9456 or KBI at 785-296-4017. And, Blake, if you see this or hear this, let somebody know where you're at so they can get you back where you need to be. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, I apologize on some of these not having a whole lot of information, but when I these sometimes when these get sent to me and I get asked to do them, there's not a lot of information to to go on. So, okay, here we go. Mun Shi G. Okay, Mun Shi G. Is how it's pronounced. Thank you for clearing that up, Nikki. I appreciate that. I want to make sure that we always say it correctly. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, they're saying she's been missing since 19. I don't think we've covered it. I think I've heard of it, though, is the thing. Hmm. I wonder if I ever did a flyer for her. I'll have to dig. If it's from 2019, chances are it's on my laptop that, that crashed, but it is being repaired, so... They're putting a new hard drive, but they're removing all my files from the old one before they put in the new hard drive. So I'll have, be, I have access to all my files on that computer. So and it should yeah. be done tomorrow. So <laughs> it'd be nice to have my laptop back to work and get to the files that I need. What is going on? Oh, I know what's going on. No. And I might even go as far as to set it here on the desks next to my desktop here and be able to work off of both. <laughs> I don't know. I was trying to get a picture. I got one now. But I got Ming Shi's picture. How, how did you say did she say to say it? I'm terrible. Yeah. It's but this is the uh, this is the uh, photo and I'm guessing they had enough circumstantial evidence to put 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 dude in jail because she said he's already standing trial for the murder. Yeah. yeah, she was a pretty young lady. Como for the missing on Facebook. Okay. Hmm. I wish I would have got a hold of that one. I'd have made a flyer for her back when they when she first was reported missing. If I would have got a hold of that one. The dad. I was like, he looks like a kid to me. Yeah, he does. Like, how is he wrapped up in something like this already? Mm -hmm. Looks like a high school kid to me. See, and the sad thing about it is it looks like they have a little girl there. And so the little girl doesn't have her mom. She's going to grow up with her mom. And now that he's not going to have a dad because he's going to be locked away for the rest of his life. So, I mean, pretty much took both of her parents away from him by one selfish act. Yeah, it's like, bro, you know, you could have just left, right? Yep. Could have just walked away. Mm-hmm. I'll never understand these crimes of passion, dude. How somebody, no, no, either. somebody know, thinks yeah. that that's the best option they have to kill somebody. Yeah. Nikki was saying that she was planning on leaving him and that he abused oh, the baby so as well. Hmm. That's sad. One of those, you, you're not going to be with me. You're not going to be with anybody situations. Uh, that's kind of what it sounds like. What a dweeb. Hmm. Mm-mm-mm. That's sad. You always hate to see things like that. Yeah, man. It's who knows who knows the reasons why. I just think uh, if you're out there having some crazy thoughts, you need to talk to somebody because that is yeah. not the answer. Violence is never the answer. Oh well, uh, we I don't, don't know why that made sense. To, that was a good idea, yeah. but yeah, it's very sad. Yeah, she says he was racist, threatening to deport her. Oh, well. Well, we, you yeah. know, she was from China. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. That's just terrible, man. Like, that is. That is. It's just some young lady from another just, country coming over here. There's no place in this world for racists or racism, for that matter. Let's just say it that way. No place in this world for racism at all. No, just no matter ridiculous. which angle it's coming from. Just ridiculous. Ugly. 
you know, and it's it's sad that it, it it's sad that it's 2021 and it's still running rampant like it is. And I've seen the things on the news regarding, you know, the uptick in 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 violence against Asian Americans and things like mm-hmm. that. And it's just it just blows my mind. Just blows my mind. Yeah. Kelsey's kind of onto something here, you know, lack of mental health care. I think that's a big deal. Yeah. Um, this dude here obviously has some screws loose, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, you know, it's like. Well, the thing but, is, racism isn't something you're born with. It's, it's, it's something. You're oh, no, taught, I'm not talking about the race. Know? I'm talking about the decision to kill somebody. Like yeah, I, the, the guy yeah. deciding to be racist, that's that's just ignorant. You know, it's just him being yeah. ignorant. Yeah. The, the decision to take somebody's life, especially the mother of your child, or if that's not his, whatever the situation is, so, mm-hmm. somebody's mother and your and your partner to kill them. Like to me, I feel like you have to like not be firing on all cylinders to to make that decision to do that. Like there has to be something going up going on upstairs. Yeah, Nikki said he was a ticking time bomb. Sure sounds that way. Well. Let's not give him any more fame. He's a gross yeah. person, and yeah. I don't like him. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this is a this is a homicide that was recent, um, and you've reshared the flyer. I'm guessing there might be some some more details or what's going on yeah. with the reshare of Courtney Ann Hoffman. I was just I reshared it because basically they're still looking for. Um, I can't think of his name. Let me pull her flyer up real quick here and they're still looking for him they haven't been able to find him i've had some information sent to me as far as a video clip of him on a facebook page called wichita rap where he was doing a rap on there it was posted on march 3rd and uh yeah (laughs) they think he's in the Kansas City area, but if he's doing raps on Wichita rap, I don't know. Um, it's hard to say. But they're still looking for, um, where is his name? Uh, I didn't put it on her flyer, Doug. Yeah, but his name is uh, Nelson. Oh, my goodness, heaven. Sorry about this, folks. Nelson Ger- Ger- Gerard Hull. They're still looking for him. Yeah, I'll shoot, I'll shoot you a shot of him here. Okay. And he's the person of interest, obviously. Yeah. I mean, what a weasel. Like, I just don't get it, man. Yeah. Not sure. We can't just walk away. You're mad at Courtney? Yeah, it's this one. There you go. You're mad at Courtney, and yeah, this is was. your this is your answer. You're gonna just kill somebody. Yeah, I get it. Uh, basically, the situation on it was on uh, on February 23rd, about 11:42 in the morning. Salina Fire Department and Salina Police Department was dispatched to the 700 block of North Fourth Street in Salina, Kansas for a report of the sound of gunfire and someone screaming. Upon arrival, Salina police officers located Courtney Ann Hoffman, 36, of Salina, inside a vehicle at 731 North 4th. Courtney had a gunshot wound and was pronounced deceased by Salina Fire Department EMS personnel. Her family was notified. Um, the case is being considered homicide. Detectives, um, again, are looking for Nelson Gerard Hull in connection with that. And uh, he is described as, oh, oh, Pete. Oh, of course, I pulled up the chopped one. You, did you put his picture up there? He's up there. Yeah. Okay, yep. He's 35 years old. He's 6'3", 220, black hair, brown eyes. He has a tattoo on the right side of his neck that says, Mi Familia. Um, yeah, it's a sad deal with, with that. It really is. Uh, they're also working to identify any other persons of interest that may have been involved at the time. And I know they did arrest one individual for, I think it was aiding and abetting, I believe. I'm not 100% sure. But if you do have any information concerning Courtney's death, please call Crime Stoppers at 785-825-8477, where you can report your information anonymously. 
or you can text SA Tips to Crimes, uh, which is 274637, or visit www.pd.salina.org and follow the Crime Stoppers link online. You can uh, report your information there and again stay anonymous, and you could receive a cash reward of up to $1,000, and you're not required to give your name. You can also contact Detective Jeff Vaughn at the Salina Police Department at 785 826 7210. But I would strongly encourage the uh, Crime Stoppers number or the Crime Stoppers website so you can do it anonymously. As like we've talked about before in the past, they don't take your name. They assign you a number, and that's how uh, that if your tip does lead to the upper, the apprehension of the suspect, they that's how they uh, contact you for the reward is by that number, not by your name. Mm-hmm. So I would strongly encourage doing that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the last update I heard on Kyler Eust, um was they had a hearing here not too long ago where he would, they were trying to get the judge on the case dismissed from the case, and it was denied. And that was the last thing I heard. I think the trial is actually set for, mm, I want to say April. I'm not sure. But he's another one that doesn't need to be back out on the streets, that's for sure. And it is Salina, Kansas, not Selena. It is Salina. <laughs> I've lived here 54 years, so I can tell you it's Salina. <laughs> it, it, Salina sits in Saline County, but it is Salina. Yeah, then you have Kansas and Arkansas, Arkansas. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Then you have the Arkansas River. Yep. Or is it Arkansas River? And I guess there is a uh, – I I'm, was corrected on this because I was calling it Salina, Oklahoma, but somebody called me out on that and said it was Salina, Oklahoma. So. Yeah. <laughs> Depends on where you're at, man. Yeah, it does. It's kind of the tomato, tomato, potato, potato. Here in, here in Arizona, <laughs> they have what a normal human being would call Prescott. Mm-hmm. But if you call it Prescott, they're like, listen here, buddy, it's Prescott. <laughs> oh, like, wow. Prescott, like P R E S K I T. Mm. No, that's not it. But they, they, they look, I, I guess if you're from Kansas and you read the word, he says Prescott. Prescott. But yeah, anybody here is like, no, Prescott. I don't know, man. It just depends on, it depends on where you're at, what, what right. things are called, man. Oh, I know. Even with my last name, I've been told many times, many different pronunciations for my last name. I do to Bruggy, but I was told the French Quarter, New Orleans, it's T. Bruget. Um, See, that's what we need to do. We need to get you going as Ricky T. Bruget. (laughs) That'll get the ladies. I've got a cousin in Florida that uses Tabruge. Yeah. I was told in Holland, it's Tabruga. (laughs) <laughs> so, so like you just go to Bruggy because that's what your old man like. That's what he called it to Bruggy. No, actually, growing up, it was, I was pronounced T Berg growing up, but I found out it was actually well, I was told it was supposed to be to Bruggy, so that's what I went with. I went wow. back to the original after I got to be an adult. It is a funky name. I pronounce it to Bruggy, Nikki. So I work with two people in radio named Ricky, Ricky to Bruggy, um, and then. This- Somebody's asking about Alexis Nicole Jones. Uh, we just covered her case. She's still actively missing. So hopefully we can generate some information to we can reshow that flyer. Get too, her located. No yeah. <laughs> I, I work with another guy out of Brooklyn, New York, named Ricky Lentwinkowich. I just have friends named Ricky with weird names. Look at this one, <laughs> Ricky Thurbridge. <laughs> hey. That's not the worst. I've had mail address instead of a T at the beginning, a P or a G. <laughs> <laughs> you got a funky right, name, Nikki, No problem. I'm used to my last name not being pronounced right. It's it's something I've dealt with for 54 years. So <laughs> I mean, he apparently Ricky even said his name wrong for the first 15 or 20 yeah. years. Yeah. So, it's a funky name. I shouldn't say 54 years. I'm going to be 54 until April 1st. So. <laughs> Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Your birthday is coming up. We're yeah, having a, yep, a special, a a special show, everybody. Yep, in a week. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring a cake to the show, and then I'm gonna eat it because Ricky can't because he's he's not anywhere near me. But I'll eat the cake. <laughs> you can, we'll see if you can blow the candle out virtually, and then 
I'd love to give you a piece, Ricky, but we just don't have a way for me to get it to you. But <laughs> all right, should we move right along? Um, let me take a look. All right, yeah. Tell us about David Zachary. Okay, Nikki's asking me to say it one more time. To Bruggy is how I as how I pronounce it. Yeah, it's pronounced to Bruggy. It's a Dutch name, actually, is what it is. Really? Yeah. Let's see. Next one up. I'm trying to look his. Oh, there it is. David Zachary Koenig. Hang on just a second. He's missing from Branson, Missouri. He's been missing since. <laughs> My daughter is distracting me. I apologize. Missing since February 8th of 2020. He was 25 when he went missing. He's now 26. He is six foot six. He weighs between 240 and 245. He has brown hair and brown eyes. He stayed two days at the Peachtree Inn on February 8th. He texted some friends to ask for help, saying he may be in danger and was wanting a ride. He is a well-known mixed martial arts MMA fighter in his hometown. He has numerous tattoos, including a skull with wings and the word Omerta on his chest, a scorpion on his upper right arm at the shoulder, and the words the bullpen mafia on his abdomen. Part of David's left middle finger is missing. He may have facial hair or a beard. If you have any information regarding David's disappearance or you know of his whereabouts, please call the Branson, Missouri Police Department at 417-334-3300. And there is a $5,000 reward for information leading directly to David. And that wording came directly from his mother, as I have spoken with her. So So has it been radio silence since February? Yes, David. No, no. He does have a Facebook, Kelsey. It's called Mystery of the Missing Fighter is what it's called. It's, you know, Facebook.com slash Mystery of the Missing Fighter. It sounds like foul play to me too, Nikki. He was obviously worried about something and wanting a ride. There you go. Yeah. And Derek's going to pull up a screenshot of the Facebook page here in just a second. It's that one right there, Mystery of the Missing Fighter. Public group, 10.9 thousand members. That's crazy. That's awesome. That's awesome. A lot of people looking for this guy. Yeah. I know they've conducted searches. They've handed out flyers. They've been getting media attention on it. Um, they're doing everything they can to to figure out what happened to him. Yeah. And he definitely does have a lot of tattoos, that's for sure. I mean, he's he's got close to 11K people worried about him. Oh, yeah. He was known for fighting. There's, mm-hmm. like, pictures of him and, like, it's not like he was fighting people in backyards. Like, these were legitimate fights. Yeah, MMAs, you know. Mixed Somebody knows arts. something. Yeah, he was pretty ripped. I mean, you're talking about he's telling people, I, I'm worried that somebody's after me, and then he mm-hmm. disappears. Like, yeah. we got to start asking the hard questions that anybody's around. I'm like, okay, what was David getting into? What was he, who was he talking to? What were yeah. kind of changes going on in his life? You know, like, I mean, this is just very... Very odd, you know, like this guy's on top of the world, essentially on a small town level, you know, he's, he's doing great. And then all of a sudden he's scared and he's just gone. Mm -hmm. I don't know, man. Yeah. Thank you, Kelsey, for commenting the URL to that Facebook page for David. I appreciate that. Yeah. Kelsey brings up a good point. Somebody could have a grudge, you know, maybe somebody that he had competed against in an MMA that he, that's what I'm saying. Like this guy's, it's, it's not like he's just like some dude that just kind of, I mean, this guy was in front of a lot of people. A lot of people knew this guy existed. You know what I'm saying? Right. So like, yeah, to me, it's just like, anytime somebody has any notoriety, I don't know, man. It's just like, mm-hmm. who knows? And it's, it's, Freaks me out though. I mean, that's not good. Yeah, it's not good that nobody's seen this guy for that long, you know. And then and to go radio silence, you know, like yeah. no, no cell pings, none of that stuff, you know, just straight up. 
Yeah, it's it's not good, man. Hmm. Okay. Apparently, the mystery of the uh, missing fighter URL is not working correctly. So let's see. Can you get the URL off of that, Derek? Yeah, let me. Since you have it right there. I was going to clarify too. The one tattoo that says Omerta, that is actually an Italian word that means our thing. It's a mafia word. Is what that is. So if anybody's wanting to know what Omerta means, that's what it means. This is the link that I'm on. I don't know if it's the. I don't know if they have like a broken down link with words, but yeah. this is this is the link that I'm on right now. Yeah. Wait a minute, I think La Cosa Nostra is the hour thing. Omerta, let me see what Omerta is. I might have told you wrong. Omerta is a code of silence is what that is. Italian code oh, yeah? of silence for the mafia. I got that confused with La Cosa oh, Nostra, which La Cosa Nostra is our thing. I mean, he's got the one tattoo that says uh, Omerta, obviously, and, and then he has the other tattoo that it's a uh, bullpen mafia, so I don't know what that is exactly. I don't know, man. I interviewed a guy the other day who uh, used to run drugs for the cartel, and now he's clean and has a business, and he's like a good person, you know? Yeah. And I was interviewing him, and he's like talking about that first time he met the cartel, and they started, you know. I'm like, I, me and Ricky are the kind of people like as soon as somebody walks up to me or Ricky and says hi I'm with the cartel we're going to be like let me stop you there I'm going to go like so far I'm too scared I don't want any more to do with this conversation I wish mm-hmm. you didn't ever talk to me I, I hope you don't know my name I, I can't see you anymore I have closed my eyes please leave I mean I, I don't understand how anybody gets involved with like this organized crime stuff like I just don't have the guts for it dude like I just don't yeah. see how people break the law dude I'm just like you're crazy man like I don't know, throwing somebody in jail for the rest. I don't know, it's just scary to me. I don't, I don't know, people must not be scared about it, but. Yeah, let me get that. Fo- I think I got that photo up here, don't I? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Her, oh, there's vigil photo, she says. For the visual photos, okay. On Como for the missing. That's the Facebook page. Derek, I believe, is looking for it. Oh, it's on Facebook. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Found it. Looks like they had June eighth, two thousand nineteen. Yeah. Oh, they have a day. Does Kansas have a missing persons day? Not that I'm aware of. We should get that going. Yeah, um, and me and um, another person had discussed that before, and we we're going to try to get it off the ground, and it kind of kind of fell by the wayside. But I would like to try to do something like that, yes. Como is our nickname for Columbia, Missouri. MU is here. She was a student. Oh, okay, nickname for Columbia, Missouri. Okay, gotcha. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah, this is... Uh... Good, good Facebook page. People should check it out. Come up with this. Yeah. Definitely check that out, everybody. Go and uh, if you know anything, obviously go over there and say something. You know, like this is what it's all about. These pages are here, so people hopefully talk about something. Um, yeah. Okay, Kelsey. We'll get together and talk about it and brainstorm and see what we can come up with. Yeah, let's do it. Um. Ricky, tell us about Derek Gibson. Okay. Derek Gibson. 
I gotta find the right Gibson here. Where is he? Derek Gibson. Oh, jeez. Got the wrong one. He's recovering two Gibsons tonight, so I'll make sure I get the right one here. Derek Gibson's missing from Wichita, Kansas. He's been missing since March 10th, 2021. He's 32 years old. He is 5 foot 11 inches tall, 155 pounds. He has brown hair and hazel eyes. He was last seen in the Plainview area of Wichita. If you have any information regarding Derek's disappearance or you know his whereabouts, please call the Wichita, Kansas Police Department at 316-268-4111. Again, that's 316-268-4111 or the KBI at 785-296-4017. And I did get uh, some information that said that he may have been seen sleeping under an awning across the street from the Lord's Diner down there in Wichita. So I'm hoping that's been checked out. I passed that information on to a family member of his. So I'm hoping they check that out and haven't heard anything yet. But let's you know, keep sharing his flyer on information and help get him found. And so that was an unconfirmed sighting. So hopefully they can... Either found him or something, I hope. Only been 15 days. It's not too... Yeah. Could be hiding out somewhere. Could be taking a break, you know? Oh, yeah. Maybe he's got people he don't want to see. Maybe he's got people he don't want to see him. Make right. you know, 32-year-old man. That totally makes sense that he has some life going on right now that he's ducking out from or something, you know? But, you know, you need to tell somebody something, Derek. Obviously, make a Facebook post. You know, turn your location off, make a Twitter post, just be like, hey, Derek Gibson, yeah. checking in, totally alive. That's that awesome, would be great. Irene. That's awesome, Irene. It's glad to, glad to hear that we have some more of his family on here, too. That's great. I'd love to get Irene on here and have her, you know, well, we should set that up sometime, have Irene come on and talk yeah. to us. I feel like I know her. You're very welcome, Nikki. And thank you for watching tonight and being with us. Try to do my best, that's for sure. Next month will be nine-year anniversary for Kansas Missing and Unsolved. I've been doing this for almost nine years. And Ricky's going to be 47 next oh, week. Yeah. Yeah, 54. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I was still 47. We got to do it for Hollywood. We got to tell him you're 47. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, no. Yep. This is all Ricky. Rick is Ricky's show. I just I just have a, a radio studio that I produce Ricky's show and I try to help out as much as I can, but I don't ever want to take any credit for anything other than just pushing buttons on the podcast. I don't Ricky does all this stuff, folks. Trust me. Um, tell us about this is another last name that I'm not gonna say. I'll try it. Fritzy Fritz Fritzy Ian Fritzy. How do you say that, Ricky? Yeah. I would take a stab at Fritchie, but I'm not sure. But Ian Fritchie is missing from Atchison, Kansas. Been missing since March 25th of 2021. He's 15 years old. He's five foot 11 inches tall. Weighs 150 pounds. He has dark brown hair and brown eyes. It's believed that he may be in the Kansas City area. If you have any information regarding Ian's disappearance or you know of his whereabouts, please call the Atchison, Kansas Police Department at 913-367-5525. Or nine one three three six seven four three two three, or the KBI at seven eight five two nine six four zero one seven. And Ian, if you see this or hear this, you know, just you know, let me know where you are, so I can get you back to where you need to be. This haircut Hello. this guy has. Thank you, Nikki. I, appreciate it. I don't know what this haircut's called that he has. I don't. Um, Patrick Mahomes has something similar. Yeah. But you know what's crazy? I'll show you something, Nikki. I'll show the audience something. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I have this haircut right now. Can't see. Show. Can't really I know. I'm going gonna, gonna to take it off. So You can't really see because it's dark. But, like, so I cut the sides of my hair. Man, I'm really not. I really shouldn't have taken my hat off on the show. But the top of my hair is really long right now because I shaved the sides of my head. So I could wear a hat and my hair wouldn't look like all billowy out the sides Mm -hmm. but i i thought i was gonna look like but i've had people compliment me like oh your hair looks cool uh this guy's got i think it's that quarterback patrick mahomes kind of has a haircut kind of like this and like the really long on top and then the short on the sides yeah um apparently i'm hip ricky is what i'm getting at 
I don't know. I think I'm hip. I've always followed the hip to be square kind of thing. <laughs> oh, you're square, but I'm hip. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a greaser, Ricky. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> nah, this guy's got a cool yeah. haircut, man. Uh, yeah. But if anybody he's got knows my brother's anything, name. If anybody knows anything of where he might be or if you've seen him or anything or talked to him, you know, call the actress and PD and let him know. Please, please. Yeah, that's my brother's name, so. I it's you know, you see these people but well, he's only been he's been missing since today, right? Twenty fifth. Oh yeah, I guess yeah. we're missing today. Okay. Well hopefully he's just you know Thank you, Irene. I really appreciate that. Cool. Well, that's that's the end right there, everybody. <laughs> Thank you, Irene. You're so sweet. We're yeah. We're here for you. We work for you. Oh, um, Nikki's asking a hard one. What case bothers me the most? That is a hard one. So many of them do. Um. God, I don't know. That's hard. I've I've done so many in the last nine years. It's hard to pinpoint just one. The ones that I think really that break my heart the most, they were the ones where I find out later on down the road that they went and I've had this happen at least five or six times, I think, where I've I've done flyers for teen girls. And when they when they were located, they were actively being trafficked when they were found. And that's hard. Hmm. And then, of course, the ones that are found deceased, those are hard. You know, those are really hard. I'm sorry I'm getting emotional. <laughs> Ricky, I'll be honest with you. Ricky's probably equally bothered by all of them the same. Yeah. He's he's pretty bothered just by the yeah. fact that anything, any anybody's missing, anybody's in danger, or the fact yeah. that anybody was, you know, taken from us and there's no answers like those are the th- those are the three things that piss ricky off ricky mm. chabruggy um yeah. so you're you're pretty much gonna get yeah. and it's, it's very proven in this show that we do because ricky makes a flyer no matter what like look mm-hmm. th- like, this guy went missing today like i'm not trying to be insensitive here but this guy very well could have just like went to a friend's house he's been missing for a day you know not even a day he went missing today but Ricky dropped what he was doing, went home and made a flyer for Ian and Ian's family because they hadn't seen him today. You know what I'm saying? That's who Ricky is. That's that's who he is, you know, folks. And and so I think the answer to that question is pretty much all of them, all of the all of the cases hurt Ricky. Uh, the one the, the case that bothers me the most is this one. Ty Markart, kid that was killed uh, in my hometown. It was uh, marked as, uh, marked an accidental hit and run, but. To me, that means somebody accidentally hit him, and uh, that's that's the one that bothers me the most. But at the same time, um, all the cases, just like Ricky, it's like they they all you know we don't we love doing this show, and sometimes we'll have twenty cases, and we'll be like, oh, cool, we're gonna have a good show, twenty cases. But it's not lost on us that that's a bad thing that we have yeah. such a quote unquote good show this week. We realize that's a bad thing. You know, there's, a, there's the, the truth at the end of the day, we're all doing we're you know, we're sitting here doing this because we're trying to help. And, you know, we try to be lighthearted. We try to keep everybody entertained. But at the end of the day, like we are all gathered here today for some very bummer news. Like people oh, are yeah. missing, you know, like Definitely. this is scary stuff. Yeah. No more making Ricky cry, audience. We have a show to do. <laughs> you know, I, I really like seeing comments like these. It's just they really touch my heart. Heart of gold, love and thank Ricky you. Ricky so is a great guy. Yeah, love you. And Ricky. seriously, thank you, Nikki. Ricky doesn't ask me to share this with you guys at all. This is not Ricky asking me to share this. I put this into the show. Mm. If you go to KM uh, Patreon dot com slash KMU Pod, you can actually join Ricky in his fight to help find people and find answers and unsolved cases. Um, he has one patron so far. He does all this stuff for free. He doesn't charge anybody a thing. He has one person that gives him $20 a month, and that person is my mom, and I'm very proud to say that my mom is Ricky's patron. But a lot more people need to go to this website down here and help Ricky out. He's he's doing the best he can. He's working a full-time job. He's raising his daughters, uh, which is a tough – I was hanging out with Ricky and his daughter before the show. Those are – 
you know, he's, he's got some teenage daughters. He's got a full time job just raising kids. <laughs> like that's a full time job right there. Yeah. Um, but you know, if you want, if you want to go to patreon.com slash KMU pod, um, you can get some perks and you can help Ricky out and uh, help him pay for some ink and stuff for his flyers. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, Ricky, we are getting a little sidetracked. Let's go yeah. ahead and tell me about Lillian. And you're welcome, Nikki. Anytime, anytime you need help, just holler at me. All right, Liliana Gutierrez. This is one I actually did this morning. Missing from Wichita, Kansas. Um, she went missing on February 26, 2021. She is 15 years old. She's five foot four inches tall and weighs 115 pounds. She has brown hair and brown eyes. If you have any information regarding Liliana's disappearance or you know her whereabouts, please call the Wichita, Kansas Police Department at 316-660-9456 or the KBI at 785-296-4017. And Liliana, if you're out there, if you see this or you watch this, please let somebody know where you are so they can help you out and get you back to where you need to be. Um, I mean, you're 15, you're in Wichita. It's not a good place to be running. It's really not. No. It's really not a good spot. No. You know, and you're 15, that means you should probably be in school right now. Trust me, all of that stuff matters. I've never met anybody that, you know, that, that walked away from education yeah. that didn't regret it later on in life. You know, like high school does seem kind of boring. High school seems kind of it's like, well, what, what is it? What does it matter if you get a diploma? What does it matter? Well, really, it doesn't. But at the end of the day, your life's going to be a lot easier if you get that high school diploma, because a lot of jobs won't hire you yeah. if you don't have a basic high school diploma. Yeah. And if high school is not your jam, you can go to a GED program. But what I'm saying to you, Liliana, is that it's a it's a school night, and you're 15. You need to get your get yourself home and get back in school and get get, get start taking stuff serious. You know, you have a big future ahead of you. You look like a bright kid. You look like you have a lot to offer the world. I I, I don't think uh, running around in the streets with people who are who are obviously never have do not have your best interest in heart or if they're willing to hide you from your loved ones and friends and family. Um, I, I think you should be at home getting ready for school tomorrow. And, and just because you have a great future ahead of you, you have a lot, you have a lot to offer this world. And then this isn't it. So uh, call somebody, text somebody, make a Facebook post, make a social media post anywhere. Say, Hey, Liliana checking in. I'm okay. I'm here. Um, that's a start. Let's start there. Let's make sure we know you're still alive and then we'll work from there. But let's just, you know, let's, let's go ahead and get, get, you know, I understand things happen. I understand you get frustrated, but uh, let's get refocused and regrouped and, uh, let's, let's, let's go ahead and crush this life that you have ahead of you. Let's crush it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Thank you, Nikki. I love you guys. Love what you do too. Love you too. Again, thank you for being here. What about Maggie D's? Okay, let me find her flyer real quick here. Maggie D's here. The Iola looks like um, March 4th, not that long ago, about 21 yeah. days ago, everybody. We've covered her in the past. Um but I, this is a recent picture. I updated it with a recent picture. Um, she's missing from Iola since March 4th of this year. She's 18. She's five foot two inches tall, weighs 180 pounds. She has brown hair and brown eyes. It's believed that she may be in the Iola, Chanute, Wellington, or Wichita areas. Um, again, she's 18. She's five two, 180, brown hair and brown eyes. She is known to diet, and she has brown eyes. Um, I also was told that... Um, even though she's 18, she intellectually is uh, younger than 18. So it's important that she's found and, you know, returned back where she needs to be. So if you have any information regarding Maggie's disappearance or you know of her whereabouts, please call the Allen County, Kansas Sheriff's Department at 620-365-1400 or KBI at 785-296-4017. And see if we can't help get her found and back to where she needs to be. Yeah. Definitely. Again, bright future ahead of her. Um, you know, Maggie, you know what? A lot of times when people put, when we, uh, 
the thought of somebody's face being on the internet probably scares a lot of people. And then when you yeah. couple with that, with uh, telling people, you know, intimate details about their lives, yeah. um, I understand how this is probably very cringeworthy for you to see something like this. Be like, why are you telling people that? Mm. Um, for first and foremost, um, uh, Ricky was saying that your, your age is 18. They think that you're, uh, you're mentally, you're not quite 18 yet. Uh, don't take that too, too much to heart. I'm a 38 year old man and I, I'm sure if a doctor came and talked to me, I would not be a 38. Yeah. You know, I, you know, things, people, things are happening. Things are different for everybody. Um, everybody is, everybody is needed. There is a place for everybody here on this planet. Uh, you, you are normal. You are 100% normal. You just need to come home. You need to let people know where you are. Um, you need to be around people you can trust and you need to, like I said, with the earlier person, we need to work on your future. You know, like you're 18. looks like you kind of made it through your teen years. You're an adult now. Uh, but now's the time to go ahead and, you know, start, start building a future, making some decisions. Maybe you want to go further your education. Um, maybe you want to, maybe you want to go into the workforce right away. I mean, really the options are limitless, but you can't do anything if nobody knows where you are. So Maggie, if you're out there, if you're hearing this, I call somebody. I get it. You're 18. You're an adult, but let somebody know where you are. Like yeah. that, it's it's getting a little scary. We need we need to know where you are. Yeah. And Nikki brings up a good point here. She says she loves you guys so much, or I said I love you guys so much. But please make a female advocate a regular part of your broadcast. Teen girls are paying more attention. I would love to do that, and that is something I've been thinking about and hoping to be able to do that again because we did have one with Ashley and. Hopefully we can get another one. I would love to have another female involved. Even if it's all three of us on the show at once, I would even be fine with me. But, yeah, if we can get a female, that would be great. That's something that I think we need. I agree. Yeah. Yeah, it's not lack of try. Uh, Ashley yeah. Duft, we love her. She actually did this show for a little bit. With that, it was pretty much a scheduling conflict. Ashley Duff's a very busy person. She had just got engaged. Um, I think she's married now, right? Yeah, she go ahead and get married. I, I, yeah, I believe they did. So, I mean, she had a lot on her plate. She had a daughter, daughter just starting college. Um, so Ashley, and then she's she does things on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So it was it was just a really a big nightmare, and that's why you haven't yeah. seen Ashley Duff on here in a while. Um, yeah. the nights that we record, she's not available. Um, but uh, we also have Kelsey Youngblood that we we we're, we're gonna get on the show eventually. It's not for lack of trying, EC. We we definitely want a female voice on this show. We have Janine Radke that comes on a lot, but she had some issues with her parents both getting COVID. And we trust me, we've tried to get a female voice on this show because we know that uh, you know, as, as handsome as me and Ricky are, you know, we we understand that we we need to have some some other uh, some other point of views on this show and some other other faces on this show, um, yeah. to, you know, to really help this thing go smoothly. Yeah. And Kelsey's like working on that. <laughs> I know you are, Kelsey. <laughs> <laughs> It'll work out. It'll all work out. Thanks everybody for hanging out tonight. We yeah. do have about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah. Seven more cases. Why don't we hit why don't we go ahead and roll that located safe video real quick and then we'll finish sure. the show out. Okay. All right, everybody, you're listening to your watching the Kansas Missing and Unsolved Podcast. I always like to see those located safes. Yeah. Those are always good. Sounds about Rebecca. And you're very welcome, Nikki. And Kelsey's saying she can hope she's hoping she can join us on Tuesday. That would be awesome. awesome. That would be awesome, awesome. And Rebecca Glenn, she's missing from Salina, Kansas, from where I'm at. Uh, went missing on March 17, 2021. She's, it's believed she is in, in the Topeka, Kansas area. She is 14 years old. She's five foot four inches tall, weighs between 135 and 140 pounds. She has blonde or strawberry hair that, that was last known to be dyed red or auburn. She does dye it frequently, so her hair color could have changed. It's just past shoulder length with straight bangs. Uh, the closest picture showing that or something similar to that would be the far left-hand picture there. She has blue eyes. And if you have any information regarding Rebecca's disappearance, you know of her whereabouts, please call the Salina, Kansas Police Department at 785-826-7210 or the KBI at 785-296-4017 and see if we can't get her found and back to where she needs to be. I mean, she again. She's you know she's fourteen and it's awful young to be out there running. So, Man. Rebecca, if you see this, you know, let somebody know where you're at so they can come get you, get you back where you need to be. 
And when I see this, like, honestly, man, if I'm honest, if I didn't know this was a missing person show and it didn't say missing up there and this, and there was no name or information, I just saw this picture and take away like the, the space between them. They were all standing next to each other. It looks like four different people. I would totally buy that. This was four different people. If I just saw a picture of those people standing next to each other, yeah. Yeah. So, like, that's what's one thing that we see a lot on this show, especially with like uh, younger people. It's almost like a chameleon situation. Like they have a different yeah. look for every, for different ways they feel. Right. So, you know, over on the right, you know, that's more, you know, like the, she has the, the beanie on everything. And then mm-hmm. I, so like, you don't exactly know who you're looking for in these situations, you know, cause it could be a, it could be a, a multiple amount of, it's like, they're really good at, uh, at, uh, I wouldn't call it disguising themselves. They're accentuating themselves. They're showing, they're, 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 uh, you know, they're, uh, showing, showing who they are through, through, uh, fashion and stuff. But at the end of the day, it looks like different people to me. Like I, I just, I'm just like that. Looks like four different people, in my opinion. Yeah. So you're, you're essentially looking for four people on this flyer, right? Just kind of sort of depends on how she feels that day. Sorry about my thumping and typing. <laughs> oh, we get that a lot on this show. Yeah. Yeah, and then fil- add filters on top of it. Yeah, it's it's good luck, you know. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, I I think it's cool, you know. It's like it, it's cool that people are able to, you know, decorate themselves and and embrace and and, sh- and show themselves, you know, embrace the, embrace their uh, feelings through fashion and stuff. That's all great. But when somebody goes missing, you're just like, okay, well, who are we looking for? You're like, well, any of these four people, you know. So obviously, she's very eccentric. She's very good at uh, decorating herself and putting herself together to go out into the world. So, uh, yeah, really pay attention to the facial details in this one, folks. She could be, she could be in, you know, with her hair pulled back, with a, a hat on, hair combed down to the side, more bang. You know, she, Ricky's saying she has bangs now. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, just looking for this face, everybody. Yep. Yep, and I did do a flyer for. Uh, where that comment go? I just had up there. Kimberly Amber Crombie. I was just trying to find it so I could locate it. And the original, I believe, is on my laptop that's being repaired. <laughs> in in the uh, yeah, it's in the shop in the doctor's office. Yeah, should have it tomorrow. But I did find it online. Yeah, let's see. Make sure. Dang it, it's a smaller version of it, but it'll yeah. work. <laughs> I can shoot it over to you if you want me to. Yeah, go ahead and shoot it over. Hmm? Yeah, go ahead and shoot it over to me. Okay. While I get it all ready to go on the screen, why don't you tell us about Richard Beam? We covered him recently, but uh, you had reshared his flyer. Yeah. I'm hoping this is the right flyer I'm sending to you. Yep, there it is. Okay. And Richard Beam, I was asked to reshare his as well as he is still missing as well. And he's missing from El Dorado, Kansas. Been missing since January 13th of 2021. It's believed he may still be in the El Dorado area or he may be in the Burns or Wichita, Kansas area. He's 15 years old. He's five foot four to five foot seven, five foot seven inches tall. Weighs between 125 and 135 pounds. Excuse me. He has brown hair and brown eyes. If you have any information regarding Richard's disappearance or you know of his whereabouts, please call the El Dorado, Kansas Police Department at 316-321-9120 or the KBI at 785-296-4017. And I do believe, I'm trying to work on getting more current pictures of him, but I do believe those are a little bit older photos of him. And, And I do know... I've seen one, somebody commented a screenshot from his current Facebook, and I looked that up. Just got the one picture, basically, this the most recent. But I'm going to have to try to crop it and add it. Oh, here's what I'm going to have to do. And I'm trying to get information. I, I noticed in the picture he's got a tattoo on his arm, but you can't see the whole thing or see what it really is. And I'm working on trying to get more information on that as well. And again, if you see him or you know where he's at, please call the El Dorado, Kansas Police Department at 316-321-9120 or KBI 785-296-4017. Yeah. 
Yeah, and filters don't help now. On some of these pictures, you know, Kelsey was saying filters, yep. Sometimes that's, you know, the pictures I get sent as far as, you know, filters and effects and things like that. And Pam saying, check your page. I just shared info on a case you talked about earlier. Which one would that have been, Pam? So I know what I'm looking for. I got to get this on here. I'm trying to. I got it. 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 <laughs> What's the name of the flyer you just sent me? I swear I just saved it. Oh, I found it. I found it. I found it. Yeah, okay. Oh, I'm getting that one queued up. Tell us about Samaria Mia Davis. Yeah, this is one we've covered before as well. And I've actually uh, managed to get some more recent photos of her, which is the photos that you see. The last flyer I had of the pictures were probably a year or two old, and that's the only pictures I've been able to get a hold of. Um, she's missing from Kansas City, Missouri. I've been missing since March 15, 2021. She's 16 years old. She's five foot three, 160 pounds, black hair, brown, brown eyes. And that information, the height and weight, that's also uh, updated as well. It was inaccurate on the previous flyer I'd found out. And it's believed that she's either in Kansas City, Kansas, or Kansas City, Missouri. She goes by the nickname. I don't know if it's Maya or Mia, but that's the nickname that she usually goes by. Um, if you have any information regarding Samaria's disappearance or you know of her whereabouts, please call the Kansas City, Missouri Police Department at 816-234-5136 or 816-234-5111 and see if we can help get her found and back to where she needs to be. Right. And I, I apologize for the quality on the, the two outside pictures. Um, those were the, the way they were sent to me. Um, I used them to kind of show variances in hairstyles to kind of yeah. give you an idea, you know, different looks. So, but if anybody knows where she may be, you know, call those numbers and, and let them know so they can, you know, find her and get her yeah. back where she needs to be. Yeah. Oops. Oh, Coma would be would be Nikki's page. Okay. Yeah, she was, Cam was the one saying check your pages. I just shared info on a case you talked about earlier, and I asked about who, which case she was talking to, and she said Coma. So she's referring to Nikki's page, not ours. So okay. Is this Taven or Tavin? I'm not real sure. I'm going to say Tavin. Is what I'm gonna say. Um, let's see here. What was his last name again? McConnell. Missing from Wichita, Kansas, since March 21st, 2021. He's 16 years old. He's five foot seven inches tall, 180 pounds, blonde hair and blue eyes. Um, he's been missing from Wichita again since the 21st of March, just a few days. But if you have any information regarding Tevin's disappearance or you know his whereabouts, please call the Wichita, Kansas Police Department at 316-660-9456 or the KBI at 785-296-4017 and see if we can't get Tevin located and, and back where he needs to be. For sure. Then, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. Pam's referring to uh, the, the uh, homicide case in Missouri there. Oh, and Pam posted it on Kansas Missing. Okay, I'll look into that. Um, and Nikki's asking if we can mention Kylan Stubler. I'd have to locate his flyer. And I'd, I'll see if I can find it here. Kylan Stubler. Yeah. You remember that one? Um, I've done a flyer for him before. It's been a while since I've actually updated it, and I need to. I'm waiting on my files to load here. I'm going to see if it's on my jump drive here, because it might be on my jump drive. I'm going to look. 
Well, my jump drive is loading very slowly. But we will mention him here in a little bit, and we can go on to the next one while my jump drive is taking its its dear sweet time. <laughs> Amen. No rush at all. Let's tell us about uh, Tanaja. All right. She's missing from Kansas City, Kansas. She has been missing since March 15th of 2021. She's 17 years old. She is 5'2 to 5'4, weighs between 100 and 145 pounds. She has black hair and uh, brown eyes. It's believed she may still be in the local Kansas City area or she may be in Topeka. If you have any information regarding Tanasia's disappearance or you know of her whereabouts, please call the Kansas City, Kansas Police Department at 913-596-3000 or 785-296-4017. And Tanasia, let somebody know where you're at so they can, you know, get, you know, get you found and get you back where you need to be. Yeah. Yeah. No good at all. Definitely, definitely. Oh, hey, I have Kim Amber Crombie's Kimberly Amber Crombie's uh, flyer on my jump drive. I'm, I have that one ready. It's just taking its dear sweet time. It's almost loaded. I don't know why it's being so slow. I don't know, bro. I've got the. I don't I know, don't, buddy. Yeah, I don't either. I don't either. What I need to find out on Kim is I need to. Oh. Ricky's Ricky's doing his stuff on the air, folks. This is yeah, his face. I apologize. He makes. I apologize. <laughs> I want to find this out is... what her actual current age would be. And my, oh, the one place I thought I could get it from isn't giving it to me. So let me try a different this is, one. This is his face when he's working on his computer. Yeah. I get deep into it, let me tell you. He's very, don't try to touch him right now, folks. He will snap at you. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> he will bite. I'm just kidding. <laughs> There we go. Okay, there we go. That's what I needed to know. Okay. Good. You haven't Man. said anything about my sweet new microphone at all, Ricky. What happened to your headset, man? Well, my wife didn't. I loved the headset. I thought it was great, yeah. but this is like a really good microphone. We've been talking about getting one for about a year, so we got one. But mm, cool. I I like it. Cool. I do have the Kimberly Rose flyer you sent me. No, yeah, yeah, I've got that one too. I just wanted to verify because her age now is going to be different than what that flyer says. So I wanted to make okay. sure I knew what her age now would be. But Do you want me to go ahead and? Her. Yeah, you can go ahead and put it up there. Okay, cool. What's up? Yeah, she is missing from Brooksville, Kentucky. She's been missing since June thirteenth of twenty thirteen. She was twenty three when she went missing. She would now be thirty one. Uh, she's five foot six inches tall, one hundred and ten pounds, brown hair and brown eyes. Uh, she left her home stating she would return later and has not been seen or heard from since. Her car was recovered later the same day at the park and pool at Johnsonville along Kentucky 9 and was searched by Kentucky State Police. Um, she has several tattoos. She has a full back tattoo of a fairy, Chinese lettering on the left side of her abdomen, the name Zane Austin on her left foot, a butterfly on her left ankle, and a teal color cervical cancer ribbon on her left side. If you have any information regarding Kimberly's disappearance or you know of her whereabouts, please call the Kentucky State Police Dry Ridge Post at 859-428-1212. So you, yeah. haven't, you haven't updated this flyer in a long time. Yeah, I need to update that one. I'm glad it's on my jump drive so I can actually do that. Older flyer for sure. Yeah. But hopefully we can help generate some information for, for Kimberly and get her located. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Brooksville, Kentucky, man. They're very well from all over the place. Not a problem, Nikki. Good night. This computer's jump. My jump drive is loading very, very slowly. Yeah, we might want to hold off on that. Let's finish these last two flyers before we do anything crazy. Yeah. Show. Tell us about Tyler Wade Gibson. Yep. He's got that second picture. That's like a serious hairstyle, man. This I one, couldn't pull that off. I updated. 
they doing? updated with with better quality pictures of the car, and I added and some I other. I didn't put them on the there. screen. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. He went missing from Wichita, Kansas, on March 18th, 2021. He's 26 years old, five foot eleven, weighs between 180 and 220 pounds. He has uh, dark or dirty dark blonde hair and blue eyes. Uh, let's see here. He was last seen in the 55th and hydraulic area in Wichita. He left notes to his family indicating the intended to harm himself. He was last known to be driving a dark gray with a black front bumper area. 2004-2005 Mitsubishi Lancer uh, four-door. It has a stock spoiler on it. The driver's side front door is badly dented in, and there are puncture holes above the gas tank from a forklift. Uh, let's see. The information I did add today was that he has a tattoo of a dragon on his right arm up by his shoulder. He also has a faint scar above one of his eyes. He was last known to be wearing an orange long-sleeved Miller towing shirt, a black Sandlion or iron and metal hoodie, a uh, let's see, real tree camouflage pants, blue and white Nike shoes, and a black and gray snap beanie. If you have any information regarding Tyler's disappearance or you know of his whereabouts, Please, or you see his car, please call 911 immediately or call the Wichita, Kansas Police Department at 316-268-4111 or the KBI at 785-296-4017 and see if we can't help get him located. Yeah. Hopefully he's still safe and sound somewhere. I saw somebody commented that they thought they saw him in the Hutchinson area. I'm not sure if that was ever verified or not, but... I hope so, man. Like... I just hate seeing, you know, that picture on the far left there, Yeah, you know, looks like it's probably like, is it like a, it's either like a driver's license photo or something he, like, maybe he got in yeah. trouble. You know, it looks yeah. like it could be like a mugshot type situation. I did really? in that picture, and it might not be, but I'm just saying, he, like, I don't know. It just looks like he's talking about harming himself. Like, like we were talking about last week, um, we had somebody and I said that he looked like he had sad eyes, remember? Well, that person ended up, you know, that, that ended up being a, a, a located deceased one. And that was, you know, I hate seeing people where they look like they have pain, you know, and, like, and you hear that they like are acting kind of funny and taken off and you haven't seen them in a while. I just, I hate that people, you know, we had Kelsey had kind of hit the nail on the head earlier in the show. Um, there's not a great uh, source of mental health care in this country. And I hate seeing anybody that's having a dark time trying to get over something or get through something or work through something. And they're suffering alone, and nobody knows. And uh, you know, and again, I, I don't know. This guy might have just took it, taken off, and went on a road trip. But I mean, that when you said that he had left a note saying he was going to maybe harm himself, um, you know, it just makes you feel like maybe Tyler Wade Gibson has a lot on his shoulder, a lot on his plate, and uh, it's not easy being that guy. So I hope he's still with us, uh, Tyler. If you see this, uh, I I at one point was in the valley of hell in life. And it was a long, scary walk out of that place. I'll tell you what, but I got out of there. There is light at the end of the tunnel. Um, there's, you know, if it, I, if you're still thinking about harming yourself, you need to go talk to somebody, a professional. Um, this is nothing worth leaving earth over brother. Trust me. You're just having some issues. You're having some thoughts. Yeah. You know, you're, you're bought, you're 26. So your body just, your brain just stopped developing fully. You're, you're a brand new person, man. 26, you're a brand new person. You might feel like you have a, you know, a big long road ahead of you. Maybe nothing is, is going to go right, but trust me, I am proof that if, if you just keep showing up every day and walking, you eventually get through all of it. You, uh, there is another side to everything. So, uh, Tyler, if you're out there watching this, Please let somebody know you're safe. If you are thinking of harming yourself, please contact somebody. Um, uh, like even call nine one one if you're really serious about it, you know, buddy. But you know, contact. Um, there's there's places you can go to sort of just you know go and like get t- take a take a break and have them you know evaluate you and see where you're at. Um, but yeah, man, let's definitely not harm ourselves and let's definitely call somebody and let them know you're there. Jump over and check your. Uh... Private your uh, messenger real quick. Got it. Uh, yeah, I hate I hate that man. This guy has nobody seen him in a couple of days, and he's you know saying some kind of alarming stuff. You know, I don't like that at all, man. Yeah, and I did find 
Is it Kalan or Killen? Kylan? Yeah, Kylan. Stubler's flyer, finally. And again, it needs updated as well. But he went missing from Columbia, Missouri on April 22nd, 2011. Give me just a second. Uh, Give me 30 seconds, buddy. I'll get it up there. Okay. I'm really quick at being a producer. (laughs) I'm the best producer ever. (laughs) What's his name? K-Y-L-A-N. P-U-B-L-E-R. Save. Hey, I'll get it up there. Watch. Give me 22 seconds. Okay. Exactly 22 seconds. Maybe. I'm having trouble now. Oh. Yep. Starting to lose my. There, I got it. I got it. Starting to lose my confidence in myself, Ricky. Hold on. Go ahead. Keep talking. Go ahead. (laughs) Okay. Yeah, okay, I'm hoping it's Kylan Stubler. He went missing from Columbia, Missouri, April 22nd, 2011. He was 17 when he went missing. He would be 27 now. He is 5'10 to 6 foot, uh, weighs 150 pounds, brown hair and brown eyes. He was last seen Thursday, April 21st, 2011 at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, leaving his home with a person unfamiliar to the family. A friend later came forward to say that Kylan stayed at his house Thursday evening but left early Friday morning. Friends and family have not heard from Kylan since then. He was last seen wearing a gray sweatshirt, jeans, and Jordan Air Jordan tennis shoes. Uh, Kylan may have traveled to St. Louis, Missouri. And I'm not sure if the reward has changed, but at the time that I did this flyer, the family was offering a $10,000 reward for any information that leads to a safe return or information leading to the arrest and conviction of the person or persons responsible for Kylan's disappearance. And if you have any information regarding Kylan's disappearance or Norva's whereabouts, please call the Columbia, Missouri Police Department at 573-442-6131 or Columbia, Missouri Crime Stoppers. At 573-875-TIPS, 573-875, I believe it's uh, 8477, I believe, is what that is. And Nikki's saying that he disappeared, he didn't leave on his own volition. And she says, detective, that foul play is suspected in his case. And I saw a comment by Deirdre Carlin. He said, mental health needs need to be talked about as a good thing, and it's okay to seek help and not talk bad about it. I completely agree with that. Completely, completely. And then Mondi says, health care, mental, hair, mental health care and maintenance is expensive. I wish it was so much more affordable so everyone can get all the necessary help they need. Again, I agree with that as well. You know, I, I agree with that completely. I think healthcare in general, not just mental health care, but healthcare in general needs to be made more affordable. From what I've seen, the United States has the most expensive health care in the world. So that's not a good thing. But anywho, I think we have one last one to cover tonight, I believe. Yeah, we do. This is uh, some sad news out of um, out of uh, Dodge City, Kansas. Go ahead and let us know about that. What's going on here? All righty. This is okay. There's actually an update in his case. Zacharias Giannino. Um, we, he was found dead in the backyard of a of a home. I believe it was. Let me get his fire up here again. Um, on March 21st, 2021, at approximately 8.26 p.m., Dodge City Police were dispatched to the 1200 block of West Elm Street, where they located his, the deceased body of an unknown, an unknown male appearing to be in his 20s, later identified as 18-year-old Zacharias Giannino of Dodge City. After processing the scene, his body was turned over to the Ford County Corner for further examination. Condition of his body indicated he had been deceased for a few weeks. Um, an autopsy was performed on March 23rd to determine the cause of death, which will not be released at this time. His, his identity was also confirmed, and next of kin was notified, and there is an update in his case. Uh, there have been four, ar- four arrests made in connection with his case. Um, uh, at approximately 4 o'clock Tuesday, March 23rd, Dodge City Police arrested a 19-year-old man and a few hours later a 31-year-old female. Both of Dodge City, both were booked into Ford County Jail. 
Um, overnight, police also arrested a 16-year-old female for an active warrant and a 17-year-old male for interference with law enforcement and criminal desecration. Charges will be filed with the Ford County Attorney's Office. Officials believe that Zacharias was killed by a single gunshot to the head in the early morning hours of January 28th in the Veterans of Foreign Wars Park near 12th Avenue and Cedar Street. Dodge City Police says Giannino's body was hidden outdoors in a nearby but secluded area. The extremely low temperatures have followed help to preserve the condition of the remains, the police department said in a Facebook post. The investigation is ongoing, and if you have any information... Um, in his in his death, call Dodge City Police Department at 620-225-8126, or you can submit a tip through the uh, Dodge City Police Department Facebook page as well. Yeah. So I'm glad to see that arrests were made in his case, definitely. So stupid, man. Young kid. Yeah, 18 the world ahead of him. Old, yeah, 18 years old. I mean, the one on the right is from a picture of him getting in trouble. So, you know, that's like more of him and a vulnerable. He's scared. But you look on that picture on the left, man. Mm -hmm. It's a young kid, happy, hanging out. I've seen that photo. It's him hanging out with a good friend or a friend of his. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know if it's a good friend. All we know, it could have been one of the people that helped. I don't don't know. We just saw a picture on social media. But, I mean, he looks like he's like a, a good kid, you know, like just... Obviously, we see on the right he's been in trouble, but who hasn't? Everybody, you know, everybody has struggles. Everybody has a mountain to climb. You know, I just see like this bright, this kid with a bright future ahead of him. And uh, maybe he got into some stuff he shouldn't have. And, you know, now we're sitting here reporting on, you know, his his death. And I, you know, who knows what happened? That stuff will all come out in the wash whenever they they take this stuff to trial and find out. Mm -hmm. Um, But uh, just uh, in my opinion, I, I, I doubt. I doubt whatever it was about was worth uh, Zacharias uh, no longer being here anymore. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree with you. Just crazy. I mean, what could yeah. he have done that was so bad that it cost him his life, you know? That's what I don't know. Yeah, you never know, man. And who knows? Whatever it was, it was not worth it. I guarantee you, everybody that's involved with this young man here being killed, if you find him in 30 years, they're gonna they're not going to be like, I'm glad that happened. They're going to be like, that was the stupidest mistake. I, You know, I watch these documentaries, Ricky, of people that are in prison for, you know, going yeah. over the overboard and doing something like this. Yeah. I mean, rarely do you see a documentary where anybody's like, yeah, I'm glad I did it. Most people are like, I hate myself every day. I wake up and I'm like, you killed somebody. You know, it's like, it's not like, you know, and may, maybe, I don't know. I don't, I don't know the situation. I'm just saying like, this guy doesn't need to be dead. You know, whatever, whatever it was about, whether it was about money or whatever it was about, it's not worth it at the end of the day. You know, when in the big grand scheme of things, you know, uh, leaving your legacy on this earth, um, I don't think I don't think many people are proud of uh, being a murderer, you know, being proud of, of helping partake in taking somebody's life. So right. obviously this guy, you know, it doesn't look like he put a bullet in his own head. So, you know, this is one of those things, Ricky, where Zacharias, you know, he was he was killed and uh, his family lost him. His friends lost him. I don't know if he has any you know, offspring or but he definitely has family and friends that are never going to see him again. But now you're going to have, you know, with all these trials taking place and everybody going to court, you're going to have, it sounds like three or four people, they might as well be murdered because they're going to lose their families too. They're going to go to jail. You know, they're going to be their 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 freedom is going to be murdered, I guess is what I'd say, you know? So like this one crazy, ridiculous act is probably going to cost like four or five direct, you know, four or five people directly their lives. And, and, and then, and then you go on to like who those people, if they have kids or they have, I mean, it's just a gigantic impact of negative stuff when for everybody that's involved, because one person or a couple people made the decision to take this dude's life. And I guarantee you, you ask him 30 years from now, they're going to say it was stupid. They're going to say right. we shouldn't have did it. You know, and it's, it's just, it blows my mind that people can get, caught up in this in the game of life and just make these decisions where they think that's what that's what that's that's their best option to do is take somebody's life i just don't get it right and nikki's asking about i gotta get out of here man it's like 
it's like we're about two uh, we're way over <laughs> we're about an hour and 45 minutes in yeah she's asking about christina whitaker and nikki i will definitely get a flyer made up and we'll cover her on tuesday's show because i'm gonna have to research that and pull pictures and everything so i will yeah. definitely do that we have a lot you? of cases tonight this I've is a lot of show we've done in a while we already got it in my notes Oh man! So, yeah. Did you want to pop up that graphic for the one year anniversary real quick? Did I oh, resend it to me because I don't think I got it for some reason. I, mm-hmm. I got the two thousand. I'm going to throw that one again. Two thousand downloads over at Spreaker, everybody, and uh, you can go to Spreaker.com. You can go to iTunes, Apple Podcasts. You can go to uh, Spotify. You can go to iHeartRadio. Just look for Kansas Missing and Unsolved Podcast, as you see right there on the screen. Uh, Ricky has 40 as of, this is an old picture as of, uh, tomorrow morning, he will have 49 playable episodes on the, on the podcast. They're all there for your viewing pleasure or your listening pleasure. They're not videos, they're audio podcasts, but, uh, it goes all the way back from the very first part of the show. When me and Ricky did the show, actually Duff's, uh, was on there for a while before scheduling conflicts. And then, uh, yeah, it's, it's got 49 episodes and next week it'll have 50. So that's, that's yeah. really cool stuff. Um, let you me should have it now. The, I got it. I got it. Okay. Let me see. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And then this is uh we 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 kind of missed it. Turns out, but uh, we're like yeah. a week yeah. over. But yeah, we've been doing this show for a year, folks. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And honestly, I can say year. that we're just now getting our footing in it. Yeah. Yeah, one year. It takes about a year. year. Yeah. That's really cool. And thank everybody that stuck around with us during this last year. And, you know, hopefully you guys will stick around for, the you know, as long as we run it, mm-hmm. <laughs> which I'm not planning on stopping anytime soon. No. <laughs> but, yeah. But, ouch. Yeah, thank you guys for joining us. It's been a long show. I'm sorry to keep you guys so long. But, uh you know, it's been it was a show. It was a good show. And everybody, thank you for joining us and sticking with us. And oh man, Nikki, thank you for the case suggestions. And like I said, I'll get Christina's taken care of, and we'll do it on Tuesday's show. But with that, I just want to say thank everybody for joining us and being with us. And you guys take care, stay safe. God bless. We'll see you on Tuesday night. Bye. You guys have a good night. Well. I don't think it, I thought it, that's different. I said what I said and I meant it, or lamented. Words given weight without thought and a person, the way that I talk and the way that I ought to be able to pause and to say that the fault can be placed on my arm to this playful assault, to this race in this arm. Pray for the day they could wait for the calm. You can't control the storm, only weather it, weather it. It's five weeks and five days of rain sideways. A scorched earth search for death or water left with all the thorns. With the petals gone, settle on the breath of autumn. If the crown fits, wear it, the crown fits. If the crown 